Hi, I'm Mike from Hackaday, and I'm here with Jeroen Domberg, mm -hmm. uh, who needs no introduction. You probably know him as Sprite TM. And I got to say, everyone's talking today about uh, your presentation from last night. So, uh, what did you show off during your talk? Uh, I showed off. Um, I basically made a fully working uh, keychain-sized Game Boy uh, with, a, with a nice little display. Uh, it runs uh, an actual Game Boy Color emulation, so you can basically turn it on and play a game. Only it's like this size. Uh, one of the things that also happened in the 80s was uh, the Game Boy was a huge craze and there were also other products uh, coming out that, um, you know, uh, capitalized on that. And one of them was mm, this thing. Um, this is a little keychain thing. Uh, it's called the Time Boy. And I saw this thing and I thought, this is awesome. I, I mean, I can have like a, a little Game Boy on my keychain and, and if I'm bored, I can just take my, my keys and, and play a little game on it. Well, unfortunately, I, I pretty quickly found out that the only thing you can do with it is look at it and to see the time. So I was so disappointed. I mean, why can't I just take a Game Boy, shrink it a bit, and, and then make it into something that, that, you, can, that you can tie to your uh, keychain? Why can't I do that? So, uh, you know, I think you're known as someone who always has, you know, one step further. Like, oh, the hack's not over yet. And, and it was really impressive to see how you picked out the hardware and how you made the software work, even though it was kind of, you know, made for a full computer, you're running on an embedded system. Mm -hmm. But then the finishing touch was the case. So tell us a little about, bit about that. Yeah, uh, basically I decided I needed a case and normally um, uh, I have made cases before but I usually laser cut them because laser cutting is, is, is pretty simple. You just 2D draw whatever you need and then you send it to a laser cutter and you have like in your case minutes later. Uh, in this case, a, a Game Boy is something uh, with way more organical forms, etc. Doing that on a laser cutter just isn't gonna cut it, no pun intended. <laughs> um, so I decided I, I would have to, you know, start something with a 3D printer because those are, uh, while in my opinion the quality of the end result is, is, is um, usually somewhat less than like in a nice laser cut acrylic thing, uh, in this case it would be the best case, they're just way more flexible. So, um, yeah, I, I decided to do my first ever uh, 3D print and uh, designed a Game Boy cartridge, uh, sorry, a Game Boy uh, enclosure in Open SCAD. Uh, we have a nice uh, 3D printer uh, at work, so uh, I basically borrowed that and, 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 pr and printed out a few uh, cases on that, and, and that worked just fine. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous, and I think the impressive thing is your first time using it, it, it worked. So, mm -hmm. for people that might be a little afraid to take the jump into 3D printed design, what can you uh, tell them? Uh, well, one of the things I can tell you that is if you have the stuff, it's not expensive. Mm -hmm. I, I, I basically, we have, uh, um, uh, uh, the printer we have at the work is a resin printer. We have, uh, I think, a liter or something of, of resin near it. And I'm like, ah, you know, maybe at a certain point, I just have to buy a, a new uh, can of resin. And then you go and, 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 and put the, uh, Put the, uh, put the actual model in, in the software and it gives you an estimation of how much it uses. And it uses like in, uh, I, I think my Game Boy case is something like 30 milliliter or something. <laughs> it's absolutely nothing. So um, if you have the hardware and, and of course if you don't have one at work you can always poke your local hackerspace or whatever, there are enough around of, of, of those nowadays. Uh, just try it. You you basically have, have very little to lose if you if you um, uh, uh, manage to make a mistake and and, and have to try uh, throw away a model uh, like in resin and PLA as well is is pretty cheap. So there's absolutely no um, um, you know the money of 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 of, of um, trying to de uh, design something and then failing. Uh, it it cost yeah it just costs you some time and that's it. So I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Supercon. Mm -hmm. um, we're so indebted to you for a bunch of live Hackaday events. So in, in Munich in 2014, you maybe with one day's notice or the same day jumped in and ran a workshop. Yeah. You gave an amazing keynote. Um, last year you were a speaker at Supercon as well. Mm -hmm. um, with all the activities that are going on, um, what's your favorite thing to do at Supercon? Uh, that is a hard question. Um... I don't really think I have a favorite. Uh, there's, there are so many, you know, you have a bunch of faces who you finally get to meet um, uh, uh, in real life. Uh, uh, I mean, especially because I'm not usually in America. It's, it's, it's not like I can, you know, uh, like I usually see the people that are on Hack a Day. So it's pretty nice to meet everyone in, in real life and, and you know, just talk. Uh, um, uh, 
And um, yeah, uh, furthermore, uh, um, I gotta say that the, the, the batch hacking event also is, 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 is always fun because it's, it's so open-ended, you know, you can basically make anything and, and you have a whole bunch of people doing their own interesting things with, 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 uh, uh, with the badges and everyone is basically helping each other. If, if someone doesn't understand something, he just pokes his neighbor and, you know, he, he gets help. And I don't know, I, I, I really like the feeling of, of community, I think. Yeah, I'm with you as well. I mean, we actually, just before we came to this interview, we're sitting out in the badge hacking area and it's packed. There are, yeah. There's almost nowhere to sit. There's so many people doing it. And you came running up to me to tell me about what? <laughs> um, well, basically this year Hackaday has a crypto challenge, which is uh, uh, like in a firmware image, uh, you can upload to your badge. And uh, the idea is that uh, you basically have uh, five uh, crypto challenges, uh, like in various puzzles you have to solve in order to, um, you know, if you solved all those things, you can send it in and you win, basically. <laughs> um, so, um, I saw a lot of people puzzling with the puzzles and I'm like, yeah, I'm interested, but I'm not that much of a puzzler. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm probably gonna spend like an hours on that and I have other things I also wanna do. So you know what, I'm just gonna take a shortcut. Um, I am going to take the firmware and load it up in my disassembler and um, see if I can modify it slightly. So the puzzles get slightly more easy, as in you just enter the puzzle and you already finished it. So that is basically what I did and, and essentially it worked. I now have, uh, well, I, I actually have, um, I, I think the only, the only, the only um, uh, thing you had to do in order to win is, is, is to get the end screen, which says congratulations in a, in a somewhat specific font. And I actually got that, but I solved absolutely none of the crypto challenges. <laughs> so how long do you think you spent on the disassembly? Uh, I think I started uh, when you did your keynote uh -huh. and um, I finished just now. So that's what, an hour or something? An hour or two, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So I think this might be a really interesting first reverse engineering challenge for <laughs> people because the firmware is up, uh, up and available. So if someone... Yep who's not here wants to dig into that file and try it, do you have any advice? Um, I would say, well, first of all, you need a disassembler that is at least slightly sane, I guess. I used IDA because I, I basically bought it because of earlier things I had, so uh, I, I, I just loaded the, um, uh, the code in there. I, I think there are also other disassemblers. I mean, the, 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 the PIC series that is used on this board is, is pretty old so i am going to assume that there are a whole bunch of assemblers out there uh, furthermore uh, the crypto challenge as far as i can see is written in assembly uh, so you don't have to worry about any c compiler spitting out weird things mm -hmm. uh, like in every every single um, instruction you see has been thought up by someone so you know you're also someone so you probably <laughs> can can follow the the, the thought process uh, uh, a bit and then it's just a, a question of looking around. As I, as I said, I have solved none of the crypto challenges. I know something about what you should do in some of the crypto challenges just because what I gleaned from the code. But in general, there's just, you know, there's this big old loop and uh, you have certain checks that basically check if the uh, crypto challenge is, is uh, yeah, if, if, if that certain challenge is, 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 is done successfully. And what I basically did is I, I knocked out the check. So instead of first checking if the thing has been done correctly and then jumping to the routine that, that, that says, hey, you have won, it basically jumps to the routine immediately. So I, I can basically turn on my badge and, 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 and give it a whack and it will immediately go to the con congratulation uh, um, uh, screen because it basically skips all the challenges because it, it immediately thinks I successfully uh, completed them. <laughs> Well, I think that's really creative. I'm glad you did that. <laughs> um, you know, I, I look forward all year to hearing your talks, and I think they're really great. And it's not just at Hackaday. Um, you do it all over the place. I remember a few years ago you had a hard drive um, reverse engineering yeah. talk in, in Europe that was fantastic. Um, so I look forward to them. Do you, are, do you have an abundance of ideas, or are you constantly worried about <laughs> finding something? Yeah, it's always hard to... to uh, well... Um, it's uh, especially if you have like in uh, something with a uh, with a deadline. Um, if I if I do a project that I want to do a talk about, it has to be you know interesting enough, and it has to be uh, you have to be able to 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 to. 
successfully uh, convert it into a talk, and a, to a talk has a certain certain uh, flow. Uh, for example, I, I, I find it very hard to explain software things in, in a talk, so <laughs> that's that's why I usually do something that at least has some hardware um, uh, 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 in it. So I, I do have a fair amount of, of ideas on the back burner usually, um, but you know, picking one that is suitable for doing a talk and also picking one that you can actually complete in the time <laughs> until the talk is there uh, is usually pretty hard. And especially, f uh, for example, for the Game Boy uh, project, if you look at the presentation at the end, there's basically a to-do where I'm basically saying, yeah, I didn't, you know, f finish that up neatly and, and, and that still has some, some issues, etc. Uh, that is basically because I ran out of time and I literally didn't um, uh, see any of the talks the first day because I was working on finishing the presentation. Well, for you and for everyone else, I think it's great we're recording them. Um, we've got a great camera oh, yeah. crew and uh, you know, people recording these interviews. It's, it's a real treat that um, although everyone wants to be here, we did sell out and it's yeah. nice that all of this knowledge and all the energy will, will go out there.